NASA is associated with smart, brave people, do anything truth seekers, nearly faultless people. Technically, we may be right. Without them, we might not have realized the universe's full potential. There were times when these immaculate people made life-threatening mistakes and thought they were doomed. In this video, we will take a look at 10 times when NASA felt all hope was lost. Astronauts Nightmare, American and Russian astronauts visited the Russian space station Mir on February 24, 1997. This voyage was part of the shuttle Mir program, called as Phase 1, which was aimed to strengthen collaboration between the two nations' space agencies and to teach Americans about long-duration space travel. Things didn't go as planned. No, but the two countries didn't fight themselves. Both nations ate together. Alexander Luzitkin, a crew member, ignited a solid-fuel oxygen generator in Mir's Kyant-1 module after supper, blazing a three-foot flame with sparks and molten metal across the module and generating thick smoke. The searing flame shut off access to one of the two Soyuz escape vehicles, which Corazon, Calorie, and Ewald would utilize in an emergency evacuation. The team was calm despite the situation. Corzon sprayed foam from a fire extinguisher to dampen the flame, as Linninger kept him in place and the rest of the crew handed him two more. Corzon's efforts prevented serious damage, however a few panels were burned. After a few hours, Mir's life support system cleared the smoke. No one died or was hospitalized, thankfully. Shuttle Disintegration On February 1, 2003, a tragedy shook NASA. The space shuttle destroyed on re-entry, killing seven crew members. What happened? Why did a 21-year-old space shuttle explode? A thorough inspection revealed shocking results. I'll explain. Polyurethane foam broke off from the space shuttle's external tank during the STS-107 launch. Foam shedding damaged the orbiter's left-wing thermal protection tiles. The thermal protection tiles shield the space shuttle orbiter from the 3,000 degree Fahrenheit heat of re-entry. I'm sure you get it now. Damage to Columbia's heat shield and internal wing structure caused the orbiter to become unstable and disintegrate upon re-entry. NASA ceased space operations for two years, death 15 seconds. Despite less advanced scientific and technological skills, 50 years ago, humanity did great things through bravery and determination. July 1969's Apollo 11 mission was won. As Apollo headed for the moon, it sent and received many signals. Misinterpreting a message can be disastrous. Everyone was stressed, from the newest member to the flight director. As the spacecraft approached lunar orbit, the crew prepared for the risky moon drop. When the spacecraft left the moon's shadow, Mission Control got tracking data showing it was off course. Confused, we looked to be out of a radial velocity, stated Flight Controller Steve Bales, when he said, halfway to my orbit limit, contact to the lunar module was lost. Crew and Mission Control lost contact. Fair spread. Control room and spaceship tried to communicate. The spacecraft drifted off track. Armstrong needed to land safely since fuel was low. He gazed out the window and saw a gigantic hole filled with car-sized stones. The astronauts were in a bind when the gas ran out. The simplest approach was to slow down and fly over any obstacles, but it would take too long and use too much gasoline, lowering takeoff fuel. Mission Control in Houston gave them 30 seconds. NASA had previously decided to terminate a flight if the landing timer reached 30 seconds. Armstrong could see the moon's surface via his small window and believed he could land safely if he continued going. You could hear a pin drop in the control center. Hope Armstrong verified landing. The control center was relieved. Close. Apollo 11 landed in 15 seconds. JWST space rock damage. The James Webb Space Telescope was launched on December 25, 2021. While in space, a meteorite damaged and clung to one of the object's telescope mirrors. 22 through 24 May. NASA's scientists carried out some investigations to evaluate how potent the harm could have been, and they found that there was no serious damage. Experts claim that it is functioning quite properly, and there is nothing to be worried about. Webb has enough fuel for 20 years, according to scientists. Saturn V. Struck by lightning, launch controllers were worried about the weather for the second lunar mission. The crew reported rainfall on the Yankee Clipper's windows before the astronauts were shut inside. After evaluating the weather, controllers began the countdown. How incorrect they were, and nature didn't waste any time in making them understand. Saturn V rocket carrying three astronauts to the moon launched at 11.22 a.m. 
P. Conrad saw a dazzling flash of light 36 seconds later, and the capsule's master alarm shrieked. The command module's instrument panel displayed electrical warnings. No one realized at the moment that lightning struck the spacecraft. The rocket behaved like a lightning rod as it sped through the low-altitude rain clouds. A second lightning strike 52 seconds into the flight at 14,500 feet damaged the rocket further. Using launch escape rockets, the crew had to separate from the Saturn V and land off the coast of Florida. Apollo 12 would have ended early if ground controllers hadn't destroyed the Saturn V with self-destruct bombs. Millions of people worldwide watched Apollo tether with Soyuz. The Soyuz and Apollo flights launched on the 15th of July 1975 and docked on the 17th of the same month. Three hours later, through the open hatch of the Soyuz, the two mission commanders, Stafford and Leonov, held the first international handshake in space. It was amazing. While the two ships moored, the three Americans and two Soviets exchanged flags and gifts, listened to each other's music, signed certificates, toured each other's ships, ate together, joke around, and conversed in each other's languages. But little did they realize that they'd be battling for their lives very soon. Moments later, the lighted RCS liquid propellant escaped from the spacecraft and re-entered a cavern air intake exposing the crew to toxic hydrazine and nitrogen tetroxide gases during the descent into the atmosphere. The RCS was mistakenly left on during the descent, drawing in toxic gases along with outside air. Stafford swiftly fetched emergency oxygen masks, fastened one on Brand, and delivered one to Slayton, while Brand temporarily lost consciousness. Luckily, there was no mortality, although the three astronauts were hospitalized in Honolulu, Hawaii for two weeks. Apollo 13 Explosion Apollo 13's oxygen tank burst. The Houston Control Center was baffled. There was a chance that something had been placed wrong, but no one was ready to acknowledge anything at the moment because everyone was too intent on solving the problem at hand. In the minutes after the tragedy, there were many unusual signs that Tank 2 was empty and Tank 1's pressure was falling. The spacecraft's computer had reset and the high-gain antenna wasn't working. No astronauts were wounded when the mission was aborted. Once they safely returned to Earth, Engineers began examining the causes of the accident in order to prevent it from happening again. Within weeks, review teams had established a clear picture of the events that led to the near-death calamity. A five-year-old design change contributed to Apollo 13's life-or-death drama. The systems on the command and service modules were designed to function at 28 volts during flight. In 1965, 65 volts became the standard for Kennedy Space Center pre-flight tests. North American engineers directed that the craft's electrical components be updated to receive both levels of electricity that year. However, one important participant was not told of the change. The servicing module held two oxygen tanks. The oxygen from these tanks was employed not just to breathe for the astronauts, but also to power three fuel cells that gave electrical power to the command ship's numerous systems. Each oxygen tank included a thermostat and heater to control the temperature. The thermostat's manufacturer didn't know it needed 65 volts. Oh no, but maybe not. All previous Apollo oxygen tanks worked perfectly. Apollo 13's second oxygen tank had a shaky past. Tank number two, which was eventually used on Apollo 13, was accidentally dropped by technicians that were handling it by roughly two inches. They investigated the tank and came to the conclusion that there were no evident damage from the incident. Eventually, the tank that should have been jettisoned was authorized for flight and placed on Apollo 13. The plunge earlier damaged the tiny tube used to fill and dump its cold contents. Workers heated the residual liquid oxygen in the tank, converting it to gas that could be vented outdoors. The tank's thermostat was meant to limit the temperature from rising above 80 degrees Fahrenheit. As the tank's temperature climbed, the thermostat was turned on, revealing the 1965 error. 65 volt surge welded 28 volt thermostat shut. Temperatures within the tank hit 1000 degrees Fahrenheit during the attempt to empty it because workers were ignorant of the problem. Some of the electrical insulation inside the tank was destroyed by the intense heat. Nobody knew it, but the service module of Apollo 13 carried the elements for a little bomb when it launched. Ground controllers instructor Jack Swigert to switch out the fans in the service module's two liquid oxygen tanks that evening on April 13th in order to mix the contents and produce more precise quantity readings. This was when the bomb detonated. The faulty wiring resulted in a spark that ignited a fire within the oxygen tank when the fan in tank number two was triggered. Due to oxygen fueling the fire, the tank's pressure quickly grew until it burst, destroying most of the plumbing in the service module and rendering the spacecraft unusable. 
That was quite the turn of events. In the aftermath of Apollo 13, engineers redesigned the oxygen tanks to avoid similar calamities, unforeseen circumstances. NASA intended to utilize the orbiter to test the performance of space lab systems and to monitor the vehicle's environment in space. STS-51F, or Space Lab 2, was the 19th Space Shuttle mission. She was scheduled to make her first launch attempt on the 12th of July, 1985, but something occurred. The liftoff was aborted at exactly T-3 seconds after the main engine firing. The number 2 SSME coolant valve had malfunctioned, which forced all the three main engines to shut down. NASA repaired the glitch and decided to give this mission a go, one more time. The second launch, 17 days after the first, was successful, but immediately after takeoff, one of the two temperature sensors in the center engine failed. The second sensor failed two minutes and 12 seconds later after launch, causing the center engine to totally shut down. One of the identical temperature sensors in the right engine failed roughly eight minutes into the flight, and the remaining right engine temperature sensor showed readings near the red line for engine shutdown. Jenny Howard, a booster systems engineer, intervened promptly to direct the crew to block any subsequent automated SSME shutdowns based on sensor readings, saving the potential shutdown of a second engine and an abort mode that may have resulted in the loss of crew and the spacecraft. The failing SSME resulted in an abort-to-orbit ATO trajectory, which resulted in the shuttle reaching a lower-than-planned orbital height. A lucky legend, the 20th of February, 1962, was a great day for America. John Glenn became the instant hero when he orbited the Earth three times on board the Friendship 7 in just four hours and 52 minutes. But while he was in space, he had a tiny dilemma, one that kept him on the edge of his seat as well. Mission Control received a signal after Glenn's second orbit that the heat shield had fallen loose. Despite the likelihood that it could be an erroneous message, Mission Control took no chances. Normally, once the rockets were fired to slow the capsule for re-entry, the retro packet package would be jettisoned. Glenn, on the other hand, was urged to keep the retro pack in order to keep the heat shield in place. Glenn watched as huge chunks raced by the window while trying to keep control of the spaceship, wondering if it was the retro pack or heat shield breaking up. He's tense. Fortunately, the heat shield remained intact because otherwise, Glenn and his capsule would have been destroyed. On the 9th of July, 2013, Luca Parmenito and Chris Cassidy successfully completed their spacewalk. Upon returning to the U.S. airlock, Parmitano noticed that he had water inside his helmet. How strange. The ISS crew decided that Parmitano squeezed his drink bag when he leaned forward in the airlock, causing a leak. Again, a week later, this time, Parmitano merely ignored it since he was unable to identify it and proceeded his spacewalk. The water surged until he couldn't see. The spacewalk was immediately halted. The ISS decided to take it seriously this time and decided to invite the MIB to join the probe. I know what you were thinking, and no, it's not the men in black. Mishap Investigation Board. They do a good job analyzing things like this since, after their careful study, they discovered that the water leak was due to contamination and blockage inside Parmitano's spacesuit. That was a strange moment, but happily both astronauts are safe and of course healthy. So, do you have any additional lucky occurrences in space travel that we didn't cover? Did you like the video? Then subscribe to our channel and leave a like so you can make sure that you don't miss any incredible news about space and the JWST. We have another crazy video ready for you. Click on the video on your screen and let us take you to another space adventure.